that's a good morning. Um, I'm so happy to be able to, to welcome you today, and actually nose to nose, right? Nose to nose and toes to toes. So happy to be uh, with you. Can you hear me in the back? Is that a good sound level? Okay, great. My name is Pamela Harrell, and I have the pleasure of chairing one of the most unique organizations, the Orange County Docent League. OCDL takes great pleasure in celebrating docents, highlighting your myriad of talents, and spotlighting the organizations you support. That's what OCDL is all about. Our mission statement is to provide forums where docents can share ideas and learn from one another. We have served the OC docent family for over 23 years and are proud to have provided the opportunity for docents to gather together and learn about the wealth of Orange County historical and cultural heritage sites that you support, and we have fun doing it. You having fun so far? Yeah! Okay. The Docent League Board is called the Orange County Steering Committee. This group consists of docents from each member organization. They facilitate the planning of these networking events by partnering and providing framework under the nonprofit of OC Arts. And we have our OC Arts representative, then that's our umbrella. So hi, Karen. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, see, that's why I have you here. <laughs> Okay, the Steering Committee Board is the backbone of the Docent League and gives graciously of their time and talents. If you have questions, of course, and I think maybe you might, um, about us or our membership or would like to spotlight your fantastic endeavor, because I know there's a few places in here, organizations that we haven't visited, we would love to showcase your site. And I would love to have the Steering Committee please stand not just raise your hand, please stand. These are the members that support you and are the backbone of keeping the Orange County Docent League. Look at those faces. And Malcolm and membership. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what, happened? what happened without them? And you're all welcome to be a part of this. Okay. And then, of course, there's Malcolm and Margaret outside. So Malcolm is a membership and Margaret is our treasurer. All right, a little bit here. Docents, where do our pay raises come from? <laughs> Seeing the sparkle in the eyes of guests after telling an inspiring story to them. Knowing you have something and have, have excuse me, knowing that you had stimulated thought by that quizzical eyebrow. Can you see it in the customer where their eyes go up like that? Yeah. And then you know you've made a connection. And that connection, they start sharing their stories, their connections with the person that you are providing information about. They share their opinions, of course. And they also share their heartfelt thanks a lot of times to us. And these are people from all over the world. Remember, we have, vis we have visitors from all over the world that we are sharing information with. So what's not to relish as being a docent and, and the pride that it comes and the pleasure it comes to us and these can be jobs or vocations or just a calling. For me it's a calling. I do it because I love to do it and I'm sure most of you here do also and that's why you're here today. Share about your docent. In our ever-changing and growing world, I continue to be in awe at the capacity of docents, your ever-ending flexibility, and your forbearance at all times. That, yeah, listen, I see that smile over there. Uh, docents have always been the first to step up in any new challenge, and even more so in today's ever-fluid, right, in our ever-fluid environment. I can tell you that, um, well, <laughs> As long as the OCTL compatriots here, I am your favorite cheerleader. Go docents! <laughs> Sorry, I have to turn the page. Now it's my pleasure to turn over our program to Jennifer Keel, founder of 70 Degrees and the director of Molten Museum. I would also like to add that Jennifer Stand up for me, Jennifer, and turn around so they can see your pretty face. And Cindy, stand up, Cindy. All right, they're on the steering committee, but 
they have added recently our beautiful new website, ocdosens at wordpress.com, and we're excited about it. Also, calendar. This calendar is going to be where your organizations can put your link in there, so if you have an event coming up, a Bowers or wherever it may be, you will be able to put your link on there and people from all over can go to your organization and see what's going on at your event. So that's a brand new thing and we're really excited about that. So thank you, Jennifer, and thank you, Cindy. All right, Jennifer, we will come up here, please, for our Can I get okay with that mic? Orange County Docent League. I'm delighted that you're all here at our partner site. This is an amazing facility. It's taken years of partnership with the city, and we're here because there are multi agencies involved with this. So you're witnessing a piece of original Moulton Ranch heritage, rehabilitated structures throughout. And today I'm going to introduce you to the site and our plan for this year to open. But we want Someone very special in our guest here, the great grandson of Lewis Moulton, has joined us. His name is Scott Barnes, so I'd like for you all to hear from him, his family, his vision. Um, they are key in making this possible. So, if you would please welcome Scott. A little bit about Scott, <laughs> as he's walking here, he's an author, and he has actually brought a few of his texts for which are part of our featured presentation. It's really important for you to take a picture of this facility image here and what it is today, because the family was here in 2013 in early planning and were key to the success of this project. So um, here they all are. Many people ask, who are the Moulton family? Well, there you are. <laughs> Very excited. Ex excited group, and here they are last year. So, Scott, please share your words with our group. Oh, thank you so much. Um, I'm a little nervous because I realize I'm standing here in front of a whole room full of storytellers. I need to <laughs> think about that too much, but I did come up with something. When, um, Jennifer asked if I would say a couple of words. I said, one minute, maybe two. <laughs> And I meant it. And um, I know the people in the back are giving each other high fives. <laughs> Be nice. I can make this last a lot longer. <laughs> so I'm, I'm the, uh, one of the fathers of the Family Foundation. How's that? Uh, sorry about that. Um, I'm the treasurer, so I'm, I'm the money guy. And uh, when I'm not working on that, I'm helping create the film for the very first uh, exhibition called, uh, what's it called? 1874, almost got the year wrong, Into the West, which is going to be a 10 minute film uh, that's going to be shown in the museum and online for our first exhibit. So I'm very excited. I'm working with a really talented director, Jack Snee. I wrote the script, a lot of research with Jennifer and Cindy, and uh, we're very excited for you to see that. But I asked Jennifer, what, what can I talk about today? I, mean, I don't know anything uh, much. And she said, why don't you talk about the pioneer spirit? That's one of the themes of our museum. And when I thought about that, I thought about uh, one of the last conversations I had with my dad, who passed away last summer. Uh, and he was talking about how privileged he was uh, to grow up in a small town. And uh, he grew up in Julian. It's not uh, not too far from here in the mountains. And uh, I was privileged. I grew up there as well. So it's, it's a wonderful town. When he was growing up there, and I actually wrote a book, uh, an oral history of him that's over here. There were only three rooms uh, in the high school or in the in the school. And uh, uh, so everybody knew everyone, and you knew everybody's secrets and. He went to school for 12 years, most of them, uh, a lot of them still rode horseback to school. Uh, and then he went to the parties, and he went to the weddings, and he went to the parties later, and then he went to the funerals. And my dad was the second to the last of his class. And that's, that's the kind of thing you know about um, when you're in a small town. And um, I have more friends there 
than pretty much the rest of my life, certainly from college. Um, there were some unsavory people, of course, but they either reformed or disappeared. And they never tried anything with us because we knew their secrets from way back anyway. Um, but I told my dad, I said, I'm really sorry. One of my big regrets is I can't give that life to my daughters. You know, to have work, I have to be in the city. And, uh, well, I was lucky my wife had work when we met. But it, later I got work, too. <laughs> but we had, to, we had to be in Orange County. And he said, he said, well, you're trying to recreate that life for them. You've got them in Abiding Savior Lutheran School, which is a small, wonderful school. I'm going to give a little plug to it because during the lockdowns, one of my daughters just didn't take to the Zoom learning at all. And three of the teachers came to our house and tutored her you know, way above and beyond what, what could be expected. Um, and he said, you take them to church, and you have close friends, and you're giving them community. And um, I thought about that, and Jennifer asked me to talk here, and I thought, well, that's kind of the way I see uh, the museum we're putting together, too. You know, a lot of people, most people don't have the opportunity to, uh, to grow up in a small town. They move a lot. They don't have very deep roots and they don't know much about their past or their history. And we're, we're trying to give them that. Um, and I know that just from talking to a few of you here, you're all trying to do the same thing in, a, in your own unique way. And I think this is really, really important. Um, you're helping people develop bonds between each other, bonds with their community. And uh, frankly, I think roots are really important. Um, so, that's my talk. I know I didn't really touch on the pioneer spirit, but and I thought maybe I did. Because I think community and bonds and roots are are a big part of it. So thanks for listening. showcase this with you today. Um, often people ask about Molson Ranch. What did it encompass? Where did it start from? Kind of low battery or something here. You might have to put it down. Um, it was nearly 22,000 acres at one point, and it wasn't originally when Lewis arrived here in 1874. He had a master plan, and we have this amazing illustrated map that was hand-drawn initially, but now it's been remastered, which will be an interactive element on our website. But you're in a campsite, is what we would have called this. And within this parameter, of course, we're in the History Museum, we're covering the distinct California periods from ranchos to the Mexican period, to Spanish occupation to the California spirit period. But we look back so we can look forward, and we're trying to project what that will be for our classroom visits. Um, this is the homestead. You see this photo in our lobby here. It's digitally remastered. The partners live next to each other. We speak about neighborhood, community, and partnership. This is what it looks like. <laughs> you literally call upon each other, and they did. They called uh, the, the two daughters that they had, Charlotte Louise, Grandma Daguerre. You really sense this relationship. And in our archive, we have handcrafted vests that shows Christmas spirit of handcrafted goods is yesteryear, and so we celebrate how they brought together their knowledge. Uh, the Daguerre family immigrated to San Juan Capistrano through the Amstoy visa. They sponsored them. Lewis had a rich heritage from Boston. He had wool connections. So we're bringing literally that fabric together as we open and we celebrate it. This site was not always going to be this way. And so we want to always acknowledge that your work and what you do matters because it was through the California Preservation Foundation and partners like yourselves that bought a community center that would have fully demoed all historic structures on the site. It was at least 10 years plus of a battle through city council fundraising, um, looking at alternative 
plans, our architect here is a historic architect. And I say that with emphasis because not all have that vision to take, rehabilitate those structures. So we are fortunate 30th Street Architects, Jim Wilson's group, took this plan and submitted this plan, which retains historic resources throughout, which are receiving further interpretation. There are farming instruments, agricultural resources that are receiving new signage. So we're in phase one, so there will be continued like, thinking of new assets and ways to do our interpretive role more as more guests are becoming more aware of this. There was a foundation created, so we celebrated this last year. Um, the Beliefs of Game and Ranch Foundation is committed to sustaining the resources here. And the, the family, again, their gift financially is key, but it's a historic resources that they maintain in family homes and ranch sites throughout California that we're bringing back together and celebrating because without that narrative, uh, we wouldn't know as a city, a young city through incorporation, who we are. The site is amassed in a 7.7 .7 acre lot, and you're in the new barn, so it was looked to as a facility of the past in the 1920s style. So Jim and his team looked at how he could encompass features from that area and create this. So it was brand new for meeting rooms. We, we spoke with everybody here um, that we could. We do oral history, so Bob Bunyan, one of our historic commissioners, and of course part of uh, the development of the county, he sat down here during one of our groundbreakings and we did oral history with him. So we believe that the narrative that you sustain should be recorded in long-term format, could be printed in books for transcripts for the future in perpetuity. Our historic displays for which you saw coming into the lobby are the main source of that narrative. It was with the team that we created those displays with historic relics, and some things are from the period. And so we created the experience of Lewis's office as if he just stepped away from his operative, and you can look into his letters, his checks, and really get a glimpse of financial operations. But there's always more. So in a physical display, this is what the 21st century looks like. Usually our docents are received in a physical site. But there's this opportunity to provide more digital resources, and so we've been innovating new ways to do that. Our QR program, program for which is out there on the exterior sign, provides you with more historical resources. It will link you to our website, for which we have distinct collections and more multimedia. So this is a key way that we would like to help you all in the way we, we provide that narrative as a kind of a quasi-docent facility in the way that this QR code is acting because not all will see all these materials without this. And then we sustain that, of course, with in-person tours and through the city, and again, with your presence here today, that's how we are traditional. But this is innovative. You can add this on you know, postcards, anything that we've done so far with this property in mind, we use this as an opportunity to link back to tell the story of this used to be um, ranch land with sheep breeding. So we started with sheep, then cattle, and always agricultural heritage as well. So it's one of our key distinct features here, and we're very proud of it. So the storehouse for which was the original barn uh, was sized back to its uh, pre-1970s uh, extension. So there was an, an add-on, but we redesigned the, the facility so it went back into the 1920s original form. And there are breakout rooms, again, you can meet there. So if you ever need a place to meet, call the city. <laughs> They're here for you. And in the exterior there, there's these agricultural relics that are receiving historical data from the catalogs. We have purchase orders that are retained in the original ledger book. So we have all that media. We have every person who has been associated with like original appraisals. There are a couple here, so if you want to know what you're actually sitting on right now is the Bishop's Camp parcel, and we have two appraisal facsimiles, so take a look. <laughs> or go on our QR code to see what you're actually looking at and seeing the original purchase orders of what this was. Some of the distinct historical features are the bunkhouse here. So we celebrated the bunkhouse and the men who operated this site. Without them, obviously, this whole operation would not be possible. So it looked like this um, distinct way when the Moultons were starting to continue their lifestyle in other parts of the uh, state in the southwest. And so you can see what the historical preservation team can do in restoring. And they received uh, the construction team award 
awards for this project. We've invited artists. Uh, Laguna College for Art and Design has a distinct partnership because our matriarch, Nellie Gail Moulton, was pivotal in its formation and founding member, for which she also helped with the Playhouse and distinct funding for Chapman College, which became a university through her partnership. But we believe in the arts and history in compendium because without that cultural knowledge, um, we really aren't people, really. <laughs> it's just history. It's ourselves. It's the human narrative. And so we really try to fuse both into any distinct exhibition that we do and guide the public through that facility in that manner. The Foreman's House is a new build. It was based on historic imagery. So this is why your collections matter. And you should scan them at high DPI and make them widely available to your city officials. Because without that knowledge, the team was not able to construct this historic structure. And so they were able to reference the, the Steve Catholic, which is old, over 100 years old, by the way, in every image, overlay every aerial, you can see it. And it's here still to this day because it was being reconstructed from historic imagery. So it's pretty fun. You have We have different point of views. And this is Louise Hansen's, who's the daughter of the, the family's album and so these things were just stored away and literally in a kind of a time capsule way and now they're getting all unboxed and scanned and that's what our resources look like for all of our featured partner sites so people ask us i get calls all the time so did you open the museum because it's open <laughs> for which we say our partner open we open the summer we're very excited because in laguna hills off the five freeway and the pause exit there's a commercial space. It was renamed recently to the Bolton Ranch Center. You will know you arrived because there's a distinct wraparound mural created by Tim Smith, an LCAD muralist who teaches. His instruction is phenomenal. He, he really has this unique point of view where it's immersive. So when you stand within these very vivid colors, we encourage you to take selfies, to tag us, <laughs> tell our story. Please let people know that's where we're moving. Um, and in terms of building our museum space, on the back side of Howard's we have our temporized archive, and it used to be a refrigerator, so it's already at least seven <laughs> degrees. So it's pretty amazing, I think. <laughs> Great brand strategy. And you just look at the icons here, and we have just amazing, like, point of view. I think having an opportunity to stand by Louis and Ellie, the Louise and Charlotte, it's pretty amazing. You feel like you're part of history. So we believe in designing uh, murals in that way. We have a whole program we hope to put at every city that came from the Rancho. So that's five cities in, in full. If you want to see our featured film, it's on our website there. Take a look. We encourage you to see all of our digital resources. So what does Moulton Museum consist of right now? It's this right here. We are in construction. We're going to honor LF Moulton Company. This was the El Toro Warehouse. These were all the sacks of grain. Um, incredible operation. And this is our planning guideline. We have lighting being installed right now, flooring. It's brand new in terms of what we're creating as an experience. And so this is where you belong in our community. We're asking those who want to be a part of our docent team. This is our reception of, to the public to tell them our story. So if you feel an urge because you're part of this narrative already as a resident, and you may have interest to tell our story, we are looking at the, the partnership possibilities. So please, like, make the referral if you'd like to join us. This is where you could join our team and tell our story if you'd like. Uh, we have a welcome film for which I think you should preview. It's only, it's about six minutes, so if you have a moment, I think you should go back in time to see the other members of the family, hear their voices. They all had an inter a chance to interview with our filmmakers. And it really welcomes you to our primary purpose, which will be to tell the rival story of Lewis Moulton and J.P. Daguerre in 1874. So let's step back and see if this will broadcast loud enough. <laughs> Stunning natural beauty by the sea. Laguna Niguel, Laguna Woods, Laguna Hills, Omiso Viejo, Dana Point, and Laguna Beach. All 
vibrant cities incorporated from the rolling hills of the Bolton Ranch with a history dating back to 1874. A founding heritage of service to the Orange County community in the golden state of California, the Bolton family's ranching roots run deep. Hard work, vision, generosity of spirit. These values have guided the Bolton family for generations. A nonprofit actively preserving Orange County's ranching legacy by archiving, restoring, and preserving irreplaceable artifacts while sharing its lasting economic and cultural impact across California. We stand for heritage, community, and philanthropy. Our carefully curated collection of personal papers, maps, photographs, slides, fine art, household furniture, home decor, and ranch equipment offer guests like you a rare glimpse into daily life in the 19th and 20th centuries. Now let's step back in time to see how this all began. Louis Fenno Bolton is a man learned by doing. Backing shingles, working with a Boston storekeeper, and farming on old Daniel Webster's farm as an adolescent. A prestigious lawyer's son, his father was a classmate and friend of President Lincoln. Lewis didn't let his position keep him from working with his hands. He was excited by the opportunities offered by America's Western expansion, and at the age of 20, boarded a mail steamer to the Isthmus of Panama, crossed by train, and took another boat to San Francisco, California, a trip of approximately five weeks. Lewis found work as a shepherd, herding sheep on Rancho San Joaquin, before founding Lewis F. Moulton and Company in 1874, along with French bass sheep herder Jean-Pierre de Geer. A decade later, they leased 17,000 acres of Rancho Miguel, a Mexican land grant once owned by Juan Avila. Over the years, Lewis purchased a total of 21,000 acres. Today, six dynamic cities are incorporated on the former Moulton Ranch. But none of what exists today would be possible without another influential family member, Nellie Gale Holton. Lewis and Nellie married in 1908. A beloved educator and on play air artist, Nellie had both a love of learning and a deep sense of civic duty. Two traits she passed on to daughters, Charlotte and Louise. Then and now, the Holton family supports Orange County's creative community. Nellie's generous partnership secured the future of the Laguna Playhouse and Bolton Theater, Laguna Art Museum's Bolton Hall, Laguna College of Art and Design, and Chapman University Bolton Hall. Active community partners also include the Bolton Elementary School and Elisa Viejo Ranch Community Center. Ranch land conserved by the Mission Viejo Company and OC Parks includes the 4,500 acres to Aliso and Wood Canyons Wilderness Park. None of our philanthropic partnerships would be possible without Nellie Gale Holton's passion for community. She was a world traveler, she was a philanthropist, she kind of brought an artistic side. She was a painter and a supporter of the arts in Orange County, and fortunately we still are today because of her. Lewis passed away in 1938 and controlled the Holton Ranch fast to Nellie Gale and her daughter Charlotte Louise. These strong women maintained the family legacy during their lifetimes and inspired the next generation to do the same. When the ranch finally sold in the 1970s, the women traded into ranches in Central and Northern California and Oregon. From growing almonds to hosting lively cattle brandings, farming and ranching continues to be an integral part of the Bolton family's impact on California and beyond. Yeah, ranching, in two words, means hard work. It's gratifying work, but it's hard and it's 24-7. The Moulton family isn't just the Moulton company. In our day-to-day -day lives, most of us are still hard-working stewards of the land and the livestock. We have this opportunity to educate the more urban population about ranching and meat production and agriculture and I think it's it's just a neat platform that we're able to use to share our story and how it relates to the history of California agriculture. But we're kind of just normal everyday people out there working
car and get dirty. Together, the Fulton family founded the nonprofit Fulton Museum to enrich the Orange County community and celebrate our collective heritage. Orange County history belongs to you. With over 100 years in farming and ranching and our consistent support of the arts, education, and land preservation in the community, we're honored to share your history. Our family welcomes you to the Fulton Museum. invitation to please stand by, follow our social media, subscribe to our newsletter. We'd love for you and your company boards to be a part of our summer festivities. We're so excited. We're thrilled that we have an opportunity to tell this broader story through film series that I think is a distinct opportunity for early learners to really witness and see our history in a unique way. We'll have a passport that will be issued so you travel back in time and distinct stations so that you'll interact with our displays in a unique way. We're thrilled that we have a brand new collection that came to us because the Wells Fargo Museum in Los Angeles feeded its collection to us. So we have hundreds of pieces that tell about the Western migration story in the purview of Go West, young man, and what was really here in California about the old, like, Rush, what did it entail? We have incredible equipment that they have allowed us to partner in this way to tell their story in, in the sense of finance and banking, for which Lewis's brother was central to the story. He was in finance, he was in the Bank of California, and gave him pivotal information. So finance obviously is intrinsically involved with any business plan. So it's good to know where the money flow happens and to trace back to the original formation from the partnership agreements to telling story from issuing individual checks. So there's some really great media. We can't wait to showcase this in our displays. They were very generous to, to provide that to us. Part of it is because of our partnerships that exist already. Uh, we believe in sustaining the groups that exist. Orange County Parks, of course, has sustained sites, and we support the the teams there, the boards, the staff, with historical material. We've worked with other cities before, Laguna Hill Civic Center, if you've ever issued a permit and have had to go in to see the Orange County like the branch of system, you can see all the incredible branding systems. And it shows you the network of ranchers that originated and the, the bus that tell you the story of the arrival pioneer narrative. And so, we ask that you go see some of these places we call witness history on our website because we want you to go and see these trailheads that tell the story of how we arrived. We continue to partner by providing our art and uh, historic relics to our sites. And so Soka University has offered an opportunity to share Nellie Gale and other female artists of the time mm -hmm. next year. So these are the kind of strategies with Founders Hall there we will be showcasing her works, other female voices. We realize it's time for them to rise and be prominent in the way that they define the on plein air movement in California. We have really cool things too, like railroad dioramas being constructed from historic imagery. We are actually trying to recreate you know, places that no longer exist. So we believe in creating the record if it doesn't exist. And so that will be a feature within 1874. So please check out our partnership page. This is a hyperlink. Um, we can provide you with our link if you'd like to look at some of this material closely. But someone special should be on standby right now. <laughs> if he isn't, <laughs> we will find out in a second. But he has been a key partner with us with Saddleback Area Historical. And I don't know if, I don't see him in the standby room here yet. So I'm going to pin him. But. Um, one of our partners here is Saddleback Area Historical. They have been part of the story um, and they've been telling us about the library and all its historic resources. So it's actually going through a process of digitization and initiative to receive more multimedia and support. So we're really excited that it, it exists and of course these places do not exist without you and so uh, we have some really uh, cool technologies that we're trying to uh, implement. So he is here on standby. So let me see if I can change.
my meeting room. Eddie's really interesting because he is the last person that ever knew Lewis Moulton who lives to the same. He had an opportunity when he was five years old, he was on the ranch, and you'll see this on this film if you Google search small towns that become huge. He had a producer create this film of this very site with some amazing photography, aerial lifts, with drones. You'll see what the site looked like before. It's quite remarkably different. When he was a young boy, he, he had an opportunity to go visit with the men. He had, you know, lunch plans with them. He went out and they called out lunch and they all gathered. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. There's a cookhouse. You have to imagine the senses and the meals and just the camaraderie. That was the way his life um, was then. And so he he's the new uh, president at Saddleback Area Historical <coughs> Society. And he's up in Worth. So what's cool is that he um, he's actually a virtual docent. So actually part of our programming today is to celebrate the capacity that sometimes you, in the middle of COVID, you have to get creative. You all became very creative. I know that because <laughs> you're all here and you're all sustaining your mission statement. So I saw that he was in a different room. So I'm going to see if I can switch to him because he's very eager to say hello this morning. So. also remembered Nellie Gale's uh, garden and part of his oral history, which actually is why Alex Silva's with us right now. She's a graduate student at Cal State Police. Can you wave at everyone? <laughs> she's, we are partnering with the university, so she's been so passionate about capturing history and supporting our efforts. She's joined their board, and really, if you see updates on Facebook, it's because she's the voice of, uh, of that page, and so we're trying to sustain what you're doing, so if you need support in that capacity, we believe that being online, um, it can provide you with an avenue to connect and reach new audiences, and so uh, let us know. That's why we have a, a new featured website that I'll be introducing to you here momentarily as well, but we realize that social media is the, the, the way that we connect and how we share and actually can crowdsource historical data that we don't know. We realize we, as historians, obviously, we didn't live through some of these periods. You are the expert, and your neighbors are the experts. So we crowdsource when we don't know, and we ask, who is this person? How long did they live here? Try to add to our collective online management resources that with that added information and that social connection, you're now part of our digital community. And so I know there are many groups like Heritage. They were like initiatives like, let's get more exhibits online. Let's connect with you all. There are reasons to do this. Even after we started going, we go back to a regular way, there's a new member there that lives there, kind of permanently in a way that that's how they know you and they interacted with you, like exclusively, some of them. And going forward, we realize for hybrid learners that maybe we have to keep mission statements like that active in our online learning. And so I see your group as a beacon and say, we can respond. Like in the midst of a challenge, you responded. And so that's how we as a group we learn, and that's what's so exciting with the prior event when we had your uh, digital tour. Like, wow, <laughs> having an iPad can substitute. And so that's what we're trying to do in our mission statement. We can grow and learn from each other, which is our mission statement as Orange County Docent League, is we can see how those tools can be altered and adapted to each site. We have these case studies. We can see how it's sustained. We have each other as resources, so why not ask questions? make a model out of it. And so it's pretty exciting to tell somebody who lives far from us, who's not here routinely, his first time back here was last summer when he saw the Moultons for the first time, he met them, he's like, I knew your great grandfather. <laughs> power, that was very much a powerful moment. We had an oral history from that session that followed. He went into great detail of what the livelihood of El Toro, the fabric, the joys of living barefoot and running free in this open area. Like there was no stranger, you know, you go to the postmaster for where Nellie Gale's father, John Gale, was running this in 1903 and introduced Nellie to Lewis when he came in for his, all his mail and he said, I'd like to introduce you to this 
lovely school teacher. She's in Seattle, she's a principal, I mean, a student, you know, quality community leader in that, and she wrote in her memoirs, in her oral history, her, her, her meeting of Mr. Lewis in this very station. And little Eddie, there's a picture right there. <laughs> so he's connected almost at their origin story, like this is what the center of town looks like. And so by proxy, I mean, it's like, this is why we practice oral history. It's like generationally, it's as if we can connect to that very group. So it's, we believe in oral history methods. I think there's nothing quite like it in telling that story. And forgive us if we're not able to capture them today, but I promise you, uh, we will find a way to record his message to you and we'll send out an email or post it on OC Doses. So if we're not able to get him live, it looks like we had a technical hiccup there. Um, I really entreat you to listen to his story that's captured on YouTube and it's on our website too. So do not miss an opportunity to, to meet and greet with him virtually. He is worth every minute. He has incredible stories, as do you. So that's why we want to continue to help engineer a plan, a preservation plan for the future of capturing stories. Our education programming looks like this. We have summer workshops we're planning, so if you know retired teachers, especially, I know we would like them to be sitting on our uh, advisor committee and critique and purview state standards and make sure we're following all the adaptations. It's a key point in what we're trying to do here. Uh, of course, you're at one of our partner exhibits here, and we do virtual Matterport capture. So what we're working on in the lobby right now is we have the technology. So those who cannot physically visit, we digitally render, we have digital labels. It's an immersive space experience, so if you're not able to see something or the exhibit closes, curators always bemoan the day you pack it all up, put it in the shelf, never to be seen again, but now with digital technologies, your exhibits can live in perpetuity, if you choose to, on your websites. And believe me, donors and partners love that, that their time that took to do the research can live there for a much longer lifespan than it probably originally designed for a year or whatever the extension was. This is our volunteer program. Again, we love QR codes, so it's easier to scan in, take a look there, or go to our short link on our hyperlink on the top page. These are the types of positions that we're asking for your interest, for your friends, for your neighbors to take part in our journey. This was Swallows Day Parade with our big announcement. It had been 60 years since Nellie Gale rode in her buggy with her sister, Carrie Gale. So we were excited to have a stagecoach presence. I did it without horses, but still, we had a good time. So that's what we just made do with everything given the circumstances. So this is our core group right there and some of the faces you would see on a routine basis. We are members of the American Alliance of Museums. We are seeking accreditation. We really want to give you top-notch experience. Um, and then part of this meeting today is to showcase this website. We, it's brand new, so ocdocents.org. If you have a moment, this is part you can take out your phones. We encourage you to do so. Scan in and uh, take a look. But there's a calendar on this corner. It's just the Google Calendar for which we sometimes um, may be painting you from, but our big goal is to have your institutions featured. So we know we can go to your sites as a case study, and you can continue to come to ours, study what we're doing. It's a collective. We believe we're stronger together. And in a network that we're going into the future, it's like we, if we can self-sustain, and we can really engineer a master plan for the county, I think that our board of supervisors to whomever who's responsible for the education initiatives will look to us in the sense of we think in a collective sense and we realize that we often work in multiple sites. We're not just exclusively one place at one time. Many of you represent many nonprofits. And so we realize in your ladies on roll, please take time to add to your calendar and see if it's actively working. If not, we'll troubleshoot while you're here today, but we've been working on getting things ready for you to share that story. Um, in terms of what we're doing next, we always like to make an invitation to come join us. Um, we will have a lovely tea afternoon at Heritage Hill and share a little bit more about what that partnership looks like, but mainly it is to celebrate the tea culture and the heritage of the practice. I mean, it's such a lovely tradition and there's such an ornate process. And Nellie Gill was pivotal in fundraising and she often did this over tea. 
think it's a great strategy. You have a time, it's supposed to be in, in conversation, and really she utilized her household prior to hospitality, kind of prior to party planners, prior to everything, and it's pretty amazing to see what she orchestrated um, many times over by having neighbors and just really celebrated the arts in an early pioneer in that regard. And so we still in our collection have many of her household wares, including the tea sets, and so we hope to display that. So come and see some of the historic elements from the household. And please bring a, a dish to share and a teacup. It's simply that. So please write that down on your calendar. We'll make sure it's on our website there. So follow our story. And this is an original illustration. So what do you do when there's not a historic image from 1874? You illustrate it. <laughs> That's the answer. You find a creative. Maybe it's someone at an art school. Maybe it's your nephew. Maybe it's somebody that you know. But this is one of our partnerships. This is what we can do is without the record, sometimes this is based on historic imagery. You have often see Saddleback in our imagery because we're active in the Saddleback commission statement, but there's ways to communicate in language and illustration and narrative and storytelling that when it does not exist, this is what we do to substitute. So, of course, we're using all the historical records at our disposal. All of our partners who are providing loans throughout the country, we're looking from digital assets to physical loans. So we look to them as far as what happened that pivotal year. We're going to launch our narrative, our interpretive statement of purpose from that. But believe me, before and after, there's so much that we're trying to also bring about so that anybody arriving in 1874 will get a sense of livelihood in general. So thank you. I, I apologize that Eddie could not join us live. So We'll have to have him at the tea on the hill, so we'll be troubleshooting. So if you want to hear Eddie at the place, he often re resolves. It's the best place in the whole world because it's nothing like El Toro. The Bennett House, he has some amazing stories of growing up with the young man who he went to his fifth grade, you know, fifth five-year-old party, and the best cake that Mrs. Bennett ever made. <laughs> oh my goodness, you have to hear Eddie. So we'll have him <laughs> sitting at a tea um, table, really. We'll set up the session so you can kind of like, zoom in and chat with him if you like, and then also about face, you can uh, get a sense of who he is. But we thank you for an opportunity to host. We could not do this without our partners, and again, the Milton family is back in town if you haven't heard, and <laughs> we're so excited to tell that story. So please be our guest and see what we're doing this summer. Thank you. Of the Sandy 
here that can take that information and we would enjoy, just love, love going to one, another wonderful historic or cultural site in Orange County. So thank you so much for being with us today. What a great job they've done here, yay!